but merely the tip of what Squibber is about to penetrate your juicy face with. And so it came to pass that the legendary Doom 64 map maker Squibber spawned the final map set of his compendium of creations, named after the grand title, The Unseries. The Unmaking, an insane selection of 33 maps, melted together into one complete, what amounts to a megawad of gargantuan 64 inches. A wad of 64, if you will. A mixture of moody, dark, disturbing, children crying, tear drooling, mind bending, teeth chewing, technicolor horror maps. Split into three episodes of tech bases, hellscapes, and weird alternative dimensions of unnamed madness. Now, as we begin to get lulled into a sense of insanity of the swan song of Squibber's Unseries, let me introduce you to the first of this lunacy. The last moon base on Earth. The first chapter of the unmaking. So grab your shotgun, Marine. It's time to place your foot through the anus of the forces of the unaligned. Yes, tis an anal joke. Let's move on. Right, map one, old dogs, new tricks. It's not too difficult. I didn't even play everything on Bring It On difficulty in my first run. I found it a pleasant map with a few close calls, while some of the later maps do increase the difficulty as you go on. I did attempt to play I Own Doom later down the line, but I felt the difficulty started increasing to a point where I just couldn't have any of that going on. Squibber wasn't having any of my sass, as it were. Old Dog New Tricks is a pretty familiar Doom map, especially when it comes to Doom 64. It's primarily tech-based. You'll be forgiven for forgetting which button is, you is the use button, like me, until you manage to actually get the shotgun. Wait, there isn't a shotgun. Nope, there's no shotgun in this level, but you do get a lot of ammo and that's the good thing. But you are exposed to a stunning looking map. Overall, it's a mixture of tech-based structures and different colored lighting wells, which actually do make for a very unique and pleasant experience. It doesn't seem overpowering and it does give you this haunting feel that this is indeed Doom 64. Well, I do think this is a rather simple map. It is a beautiful test of what's to come. It gives you just a round, soft, warm feeling that you're safe. There's just some zombie men, just some imps, nothing you haven't dealt with before. You're not gonna lose your mind over this. It's short, Synced, and to the point, I had fun. Good map. Map number two, maybe one of my favorite maps, Manic Marines. Running quickly into Marine Genocide, Manic Marines uses a new trick, aggressive allies. By definition, Manic Marines are scattered throughout the map, there to aid you through some tricky situations, while also being little secret evil people, and they will shoot you. Even if you have a stray bullet that passes too closely to their nostrils, they may turn and attack. Just don't shoot first. I feel like I want to shoot him though. Hey, can I shoot you? I may have shot first, but this isn't proven. Overall, Manic Marines is a lovely looking and flowing map. Mixing tech bases and slime bases overall, some MP and pinky traps, it's okay. Never fear, the Marines are here to help you though, provided you're polite. Again, don't shoot first, even if you do, it doesn't really matter. The Marines do make for a fun and surprising encounter throughout this map, and they continue to do so throughout this entire unseries. They help you out with some demons, keep things interesting, really create an interesting dynamic. Though, I do think having too much Marines makes the, makes the difficulty go even lower than it already is, and that can sometimes draw out the fun though i found it very interesting so overall very fun map it was engaging and yeah you do end up becoming the last marine standing and hell is unleashed upon your face but i would have played this a few more times actually it was a fun map Map 3, Hex Complex. This is a very unique build, raising and dropping hexagon floors, raising ever higher in what feels like the bells of the hell machine. It's innards and pistons pushing you to the hell above. It's a wonderful mixture of enemies, things that you can expect, zombie men, imps, pinkies, it's all groovy, it's all there. A mixture of well-placed enemies catching you around every corner while imps rain fire from above from the higher floors. Hit scanners can hassle you from their vantage points and make a very good enemy placement overall. This keeps you on your toes so you don't feel too powerful, only to crescendo into a berserker rage and clean out the nasty is plaguing you right at the end of the level. I describe this hexagonal stage as a demonic intent stage, i.e. the demons are intent on hurting you. But should fisting not be your thing, you have ample shotgun ammo abound. Infighting is always a wonderful thing in this kind of game, and it will ensure your survival, especially on the harder levels. As a trend and a rule in this series, every map has a very fun special gimmick. It leans into it with glee. In Hex Complex, it's definitely the elevators, and might I say one of the better floor elevator maps that I've ever played. It's elegantly crafted, and perfectly executed here. Nicely done. Good map. 
Map 4, Warehouse Shuffle. Did I get aroused by the acquisition of my chain gun? Maybe. I don't know. Why do hot dogs come in packages of 12, but hot dog buns come in packages of just 8? Whatever the answer, Warehouse Shuffle is pretty, but feels like it tries too hard to push its elevator puzzle. Not so much a puzzle challenge, but it does showcase how the author is beginning to learn his elevator skills a bit more. Additionally, there are very few interesting fights in and encounters. Merely mildly placed imps, a few pinkies here and there that remind you that you're actually playing a Doom map. Sure, there are a few secrets to uncover, but nothing that I'm going to remark over. If I had to choose the weakest level of this entire chapter, Warehouse Shuffle would be it. 0 out of 10 for me, because the only most valid reviews are ones that are either 0 or 10. There is no in-between, and we only deal with extremes, like Sith. The Ghost Kako. But seriously, a dark and broody level. Excellent enemy placement in this one, creeping around every corner. You can only hear them. You only hear the mere mention of their movement around the corridors as you sleek across them. It is ghostly indeed. This is the first time the Unmaking introduces you to its most popular trick, ghost enemies. Something I didn't even know was possible until Squibber did it. For me, the Cyber Demon Passage, particularly unexpected touch. And this would be my first death in this run, only to join the dead ones and light a little candle of my own. Ghost Stories brings a lot of creativity Creativities to the table, a mark of Squibber's highly excellent and quality work. Coming up with a mixture of clever element placements, light puzzles, not too difficult for a brain like mine, light enough to keep you interesting, just enough to keep your brain bubbling, while not too tough to create your own finely crafted fetish film. I loved it, it's a great uptick from the warehouse dance. Sardine Packing Plant, Map 6. A lovely palette cleanser for me. Jump in, get your rockets, smash everything, and blow them away. Simple. This map is a simple kill box of Hell Knights, Imps, and Pinkies, with a convenient crusher in the middle just to give you a little extra help. Unnecessary, in my opinion, but hey, every little help goes when the higher difficulties. For someone who loves a good shimmer, the sardine-sized battle zone cleared my head. And with post nut clarity, we soldier on to the short and sweet lovely little map, our final tech adventure, and my personal favorite. There's a story that in an alternative universe, Sandy Peterson went and made a city map that wasn't so bad, that he never needed it to add an arrow to help players find their way around. But that is not the alternative universe in which we live. And because of that, we have one of the best city maps that I have ever seen. Complete with a church to our hell lords, a club, a bunker, a sewer, insert city reference, a temple to our lord cyber demon, and not a single damn arrow in sight. This has a better warehouse and a base complete with a working map. The map itself shows you where you're going to clean out the city from the fell, unaligned minions of hell. Yes, indeed. One of the best city maps that I've ever played. And we found it in Doom 64 of all places. This is how you do it, Sandy. Go and take some advice from Squibber. Just kidding, Sandy. We love you. You're doing great things over there with Call of Cthulhu. Love you, man. But seriously, highest marks for Dead Man Switch. 10 out of 10 for its engaging design, playful and tactical placements of enemies, and fun progression to access the final exit, fighting through each section of the city. Absolutely excellent. Well done. Finally, as if summoned by the crying screams of a thousand dying demonic babies being thrown into a cosmic blender, we're faced with the final battle of this chapter. Of course, the mother demon cometh. A strong conclusion. The unabsolution. A callback to the classic absolution map, the final level of the original Doom 64 game. The unabsolution, in my opinion, proves a lot in the original formula, except I would have had initially expected some more minions running around the map and trolling you, while the mother demon harasses you from the middle. The mother demon is definitely feels a little stronger in this map, and she's pissed. This was definitely the toughest fight of the chapter, but not the most memorable. Frankly, throwing down my weapon as I smote her ruin along the side of the tech base gave me a sense of accomplishment I could now die knowing that that bald-headed bitch would never infect the world I left behind. What Daisy too would enjoy in the Elysium Fields, but this would not be the end. As much as the Unabsolution attempts to end this journey of madness, tis only the beginning. The last moon base on Earth was literally one hell of a wild ride. A mix of the technically familiar with the maniacally creative, leaning heavily into interesting light puzzles for the most part, and excellent enemy placements throughout, tactically taking shots, giving you frights, and trying to rip your face off. All pleasantly wrapped in a lovely lit showcase of beautiful Doom 64 lighting and design, without being too verbose or over the top. Creative and yet experimental, but within its limits. Yes, later maps in this series would be more experimental, but Chapter 1 is the perfect foundation to build this Technicolor nightmare on. Not the most challenging map set I've ever experienced, but easily the most creative. I don't know how many times I'm going to say creative, just go with me on that. And with some new surprises and traps that I've never experienced in a Doom game before. Most of the time I actually had to keep reminding myself that this is 
in fact fan made. This is not created by an official company. This is a fan made creation. A brilliant one at that. A masterful work by Squibber and not merely his swan song, but the operatic horror masterpiece. And this is only one third of the trifecta of unnecessarily excellent maps. If you've just begun the unmaking, The Last Moon Base on Earth is an excellent showcase of what is to follow, but merely the tip of what Squibber is about to penetrate your juicy face with. I highly recommend this for every Doomer, but especially, like me, Doomers looking to expand their scope into custom Doom 64 map sets and games. It is simply excellent, and I had fun. Except that damn warehouse level. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this kind of content, please support me by dropping a like or sharing it to your fellow Doom 64 friends. Or subscribe if you want to keep seeing more stuff like this. Hey, comment with your favorite maps or what's that you'd like to see me review. I'm keen. Until next time guys, take care, rip and tear. Cheers.